the insurance industry, definitely part of the financial industry. Yeah? Barbers couldn't cer certainly couldn't say that. Neither could janitors. Even if an automaker, or maybe even several automakers, go broke, that's definitely nothing good. <laughs> nothing good for the economy. But does it ruin the entire economy? Well, probably not. When banks, when this service provider, when these service providers even reduce their service a little bit, then it's a reason for a catastrophe. Well, if that's the case, maybe we need to invert our notion of who serves whom. If production comes to a halt as soon as banks are no longer willing or able to provide loans to the real or sorry, provide loans to the economy, then the economy serves the business of the banks and not the other way around. And so what do banks do? They either provide or withdraw this most decisive economic or well, capitalistic resource, loans. If they see prospects of business, they provide a loan, enable a capitalist to pursue profit. If they don't see prospects of profit, they withdraw loans, disable that production. In that sense, what banks do with their lending business is act as judges over what production should take place and what production is useless with a view to their own profit calculations. Again, we can only call these, well, we can only call the financial industry a service industry in a very ironic sense. Perhaps the only service provider in this economy that actually lords over the economy. <laughs> So let's step back a second and consider what it is that banks actually do. Actually, it's quite miraculous. Miraculous. <laughs> banks manage to turn money that they have into more money. But without engaging in or getting involved in the, pro in the process that actually creates additional value without investing in means of production, without investing in labor or raw materials, without exploiting labor, none of that. Independent of that process, banks manage to turn money into more money. So how do banks do that? They do that by entering into legal contracts with debtors of all kinds, entering into loan contracts. They provide loans to companies, to governments, and to consumers. Regardless of what is done with the money, regardless of that, whether that money is actually used to create a profit, to create surplus value, banks increase their money. If I, give, if I as a bank give a money to a consumer, the consumer certainly doesn't use that in order to start an exploitation process and to produce additional value. Spends it maybe on a house, maybe on a car. The money is gone. Regardless of whether that money is used to create an additional value, the bank earns an additional value. Same for government. Regardless of what is done in the sum of money that a bank has, the bank turns its money into capital simply by lending it out. That's a kind of capitalistic miracle. Especially those who might have read Marx, they think you think you learn. Exploited labor is the, is the only way to create additional value, the only way to earn a profit. Banks teach us that that's not necessarily true. Banks make money by entering into legal contracts by virtue of these legal contracts, turning their money into more money. Other businesses turn money into capital by investing in an exploitation process. In the hands of the bank, money is capital. As soon as it is lent out. In that sense, the business of banks is capitalism in its most pure and perfect form. They achieve the purpose of all capitalistic activity, turning money into more money, let's say without going through the detour of actually having to exploit labor and create additional value. They realize the purpose of all capitalistic activity in a very immediate and direct way. Another way of putting it, in the business of the banks, the subordination of all wealth and its sources to the purpose of turning money into more money achieves its most pure and perfect expression.
this is really the kind of tough economic part of the talk, but it's worth getting into it a little bit. A little bit of economic education. Just to reflect on this, it's often taken for granted that banks make money simply by giving it out and getting back. My point is it's actually a kind of miracle, one that deserves explanation. Others do business with things like means of production, labor, in order to accumulate profits. Banks do, power with the, banks do business with the power to command all sources of wealth. What they really trade in is power over property, power over all material goods and sources of wealth, and especially other people's labor. And what's remarkable about that is, if you think a minute for what is capital really, capital, something maybe everyone knows, value that becomes more value. Self-expanding value is, Marxist, or is the translation of Marxist term. In that sense, value that becomes more value, how does that work? Through a process of production, exploitation, sale of a profit. Capital in that sense is a social relationship of power, exclusion, and force. Money doesn't become more simply by virtue of its own power, but by getting hold of means of production and labor and creating a profit. But the bank sells this relation, this is an awkward term, but the bank sells this relationship of force and exclusion as an actual thing. It sells the power to command the sources of wealth. That's what it does when it gives a loan, earns a profit. Marx has said about that, that's the most fetishistic, uh, or that's capitalism in its most fetishistic form. This thing really is the power to become more. And, that's the, and yet that's what the banks really do. That's the reality of the banking business. It's not merely a theoretical, let's say, um, a theoretical madness. In the business of the banks, they make that true every day. The successful sa sale of a relationship of force and exclusion that they made productive for their own enrichment. What banks make, well, make come true <laughs> in their own business is that if you have money in this economy, you have everything you need to create more money. If you have money, you have capital. The only thing you need in this economy to get more money is to have money. That's what the banks prove, and that's the experience they have in their everyday lending business. And this practical knowledge, what I mean by practical knowledge is this experience that the banks have every day in their lending business, that money in their hands is capital. That forms the basis of that other branch of the financial industry whose dimensions cause so much astonishment. That would be the securities trade. Sales, stocks, and bonds, the center of what is the current financial crisis. Securities trade is a, it's complicated enough. If you read in the newspapers or go look in Wikipedia or elsewhere in, in textbooks, you can find lots of explanations of how that actually works trade with stocks and bonds and other derivatives. But what I want to take a little time on tonight is to, well, is to find out what is the principle of that actually. To say a few words of the principle of that business that some people might call a casino, others call really important, but the principle it is never really grasped. What banks do in a security trade, again, it's rather miraculous. They make money, in this case, by issuing and purchasing securities, they make money independent of the actual process of capital accumulation. They don't invest in a company and take share in its profits. They do business with each other. And what do they do business with? With their power to turn money into capital. How does that work? What do issuers of securities do? Someone who issues stocks or issues a bond? They take incoming payments from the whole spectrum, spe uh, spectrum of their activities, be it their loans to governments, to consumers, for instance, mortgage payments, loans to capitalist companies. T 
take that incoming stream of payments and take the liberty to postulate an underlying capital that's yielding that stream of payments and selling that capital to the investment community and turning it into money. In their lending business, they experience and they execute the following process, turning money into capital. In the securities trade, an issuer of security takes that so far to take any incoming stream of money, simply postulating a capital that underlies it, taking that so seriously as to be able to sell it as an object and turning that back into money. Buying the stocks on margin, leverage. Yeah, what do you mean? Well, I would say not necessarily just on margin. Issuing stocks in general is this process. Incoming stream of payments, objectified in, or capital postulates an underlying capital and sells that capital as a stock or share. You can purchase it, that's what the investors do, purchase it, and by buying that, you have what? Actually a piece of paper that performs all the functions normally performed by a process of exploitation, creating additional value. You invest in capital. In the securities trade, capital is traded as a thing. And these banks get enormously wealthy on this. And what is that capital that's yielding all these stream of payments for investors in stocks and bonds? Capital is actually made up of debts. Streams of incoming payments. That's the basis for postulating an underlying capital and selling it. That means that the greatest fortunes in this society, the wealth upon, well, the wealthiest dimensions we've definitely gotten to know since the crisis, that all consists in debts. That is the wealth of the market economy. Debts, again here, that function as capital. And that, by the way, is proven by the crisis. Think about the chain reaction I mentioned at the very beginning. A chain reaction that now, at least most people know the general links of how it worked. We learned that, for instance, the most prominent, fall, uh, prominent case, when Lehman Brothers collapsed. This didn't mean that Citibank was happy. This didn't mean that Morgan Stanley was happy to have a competitor be wiped away from the market. The first thing that happened was they realized that that's a catastrophe. What does that tell us? If their competitor fails, then they're in danger of failure. Well, that shows that the assets that these banks have consist in the debts of the others. A debtor's failure means the destruction of the assets of the others. The destruction of his assets means the destruction of another bank's assets. What the crisis itself proves is that the wealth of investment banks, really the lords of the market economy, their wealth consists in debts. And what I would urge you to do is to not say, well, that certainly is irresponsible. <laughs> How irresponsible? Let's get back to the real economy. I'd really like to urge you to remember the first point. Capitalism in general means the purpose is turning money into more money. Money that functions as capital. Debts that function as capital. That's the market economy. That's not a reason to draw a distinction between banks that are irresponsible and a real economy that's responsible, but to really grasp what the nature of wealth is in this economy.